informático y empresario estadounidense, perfeccionista de personalidad obsesiva y bastante impulsivo. Así lo describen quienes conocían personalmente al padre del primer ordenador personal y fundador de Apple Computer, probablemente la empresa más innovadora del sector tecnológico. Un mago de la informática que se convirtió en una de las personas más influyentes es Steve Jobs. Estas son sus 10 claves del éxito. Greatest people are self-managing. They don't need to be managed. You, if they know what, if, if once they know what to do, they'll go figure out how to do it. And they don't need to be managed at all. What they need is a common vision, and that's what leadership is. What leadership is is having a vision, being able to articulate that so the people around you can understand it, and getting a consensus on a common vision. We wanted people that were insanely great at what they did, but we're we're not necessarily those seasoned professionals but who had on at the tips of their fingers and in their passion the latest understanding of where technology was and what we could do with that technology and who wanted to bring that to, to lots of people. So the neatest thing that happens is when you get a core group of, uh, you know, 10 great people, they, it becomes self-policing as to who they let into that group. So I consider the most important job of someone uh, like myself is recruiting. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your, your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. Um, but life, that, that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you can, you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing, is to shake off this, uh, this, uh, erroneous notion that life is is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Um, I, I think that's very important and however you learn that, once you learn it, uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. Um, once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing and it's totally true, and the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, and you don't really love it, uh, you're gonna give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society, and the ones that didn't, oftentimes it, it's, the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? So it's a lot of hard work and, and it's a lot of worrying constantly. And uh, um, if you don't love it, you're going to fail. So you got to love it, you got to have passion. It's very interesting. I was worth... Um about over a million dollars when I was 23 and over 10 million dollars when I was 24 and over a hundred million dollars when I was 25 um, and it's it wasn't that important uh, because I never did it for the money uh, I I think money is a wonderful thing because it enables you to do things it enables you to in invest in ideas that don't have a short-term payback and things like that. But especially at that point in my life, it was, it was not the most important thing. The most important thing was the company, the people, the products we were making, what we were going to enable people to do with these products. So uh, I didn't think about it a great deal. You know, I never sold any stock and just really believed that the company would, would, would do very well over the long term. We had absolutely no idea what people were going to do with these things when we started out. Uh, matter of fact, the two people it was designed for was Waz and myself. <laughs>
because we couldn't afford to buy a computer kit on the market. So we liberated some parts from Hewlett Packard and Atari and uh, worked on a design for about six months and decided that we would uh, build our own computer. So we built one. And uh, once it was up till four in the morning for many moons, and we got it working. We showed some of our friends. Immediately, everybody wanted one. And at that point in time, we had some feeling that we were onto something. But the, the feeling was, is, is so different than the experience of actually seeing it happen right now. It's entirely different. And uh, sometimes a lot, a lot of people ask, well, did you know it was going to mushroom into this phenomenon? And you could say, yeah, you know, we planned it out. We had lead on a piece of paper. But it's very different than the experience of seeing 500 people working at Apple Computer. It's very different than the experience of seeing a five-year-old kid who uh, really understands what he's, the tool that he's got in front of him. When you first got the, the job as CEO, you got a call from Steve Jobs, and he offered you some advice? <laughs> well, he didn't call to offer me advice, but uh, so we had worked together on uh, a Nike-Apple collaboration called Nike Plus. So we took what Apple knows, what Nike knows, and you know, brought a new technology to the market. Anyway, long story short, uh, he said, hey, congratulations. It's great. You're going to do a great job. Uh, I said, well, do you have any advice? And he said, no, no, you're, you're, you're great. And then there was a pause, and he goes, well, I do have some advice. He goes, Nike makes some of the best product in the world. I mean, product that you lust after, absolutely beautiful, stunning product. But you also make a lot of crap. He said, just get rid of the crappy stuff and focus on the good stuff. And then I expected a little pause and a laugh, but there was, there was a pause but no laugh at the end. Yeah. And he was absolutely right. Our goal is to make the best personal computers in the world and to make products we are proud to sell and would recommend to our family and friends. And we want to do that at the lowest prices we can. But I have to tell you, there's some stuff in our industry that we wouldn't be proud to ship, that we wouldn't be proud to recommend to our family and friends. And we can't do it. We just can't ship junk. So there's, there's a, there are thresholds that we can't cross because of who we are. But we want to make the best personal computers in the industry. To me, marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world, right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats, not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investments and caring if it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect in this area in the last few years. And we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speeds and feeds. It's not to talk about nits and megahertz. It's not to talk about why we're better than Windows. Apple spends a fortune on advertising. You'd never know it. <laughs> You'd never know. So when I got here, you, Apple just fired their agency. They were doing a competition with 23 agencies that, you know, four years from now would pick one. And we blew that up, and we, <clears throat> we hired Shai Day. We started working about eight weeks ago. And what we, the question we asked was, our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we stand for? Where do we fit in this world? And what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs done, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than that. Apple, at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. And that 
those people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually do. And so what we're going to do in our first brand marketing campaign in several years is to, is to get back to that core value. A lot of things have changed. The market's a totally different place than it was a decade ago. And Apple's totally different, and Apple's place in it is totally different. And believe me, the products and the distribution strategy and the manufacturing are totally different, and we understand that. But values and core values, those things shouldn't change. The things that Apple believed in at its core are the same things that Apple really stands for today. And so we wanted to find a way to communicate this. And what we have is something that I am um, I'm very moved by. It honors those people who have changed the world. The hardest thing is, what, how does that fit in to a cohesive, larger vision that's going to allow you to sell um, eight billion dollars, ten billion dollars of product a year. And one of the things I've always found is that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. You can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it. And I've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room. And I've got the scar tissue to prove it. And I know that it's the case. And as we have tried to come up with a strategy and a vision for Apple, um, it started with what incredible benefits can we give to the customer? Where can we take the customer? Not, not starting with, let's sit down with the engineers and, and figure out what awesome technology we have and then how are we going to market that. Um, and I think that's the right path to take. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. When I was young, there was an amazing publication called the Whole Earth Catalog, which was one of the Bibles of my generation. It was the mid-1970s, and I was your age. On the back cover of their final issue was a photograph of an early morning country road, the kind you might find yourself hitchhiking on if you were so adventurous. Beneath it were the words, stay hungry, stay foolish. It was their farewell message as they signed off, stay hungry, stay foolish. And I have always wished that for myself. And now, as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Thank you all very much. Y hasta aquí las 10 claves del éxito de Steve Jobs, aunque realmente podrían haberse sacado muchísimas más de todo lo que dijo este genio. ¿Cuál es la que más te gusta? ¿Con cuál te quedas? Déjanos un comentario debajo de este vídeo que nos hará ilusión leerlo. A ver si coincidimos. Y como siempre, dale un me gusta al vídeo, suscríbete al canal de YouTube y síguenos en Facebook. Cada semana nuevos contenidos. Un besote. Chao.